Hey everybody and welcome to another RCT2 review. Today we are looking at Quarry Adventure by Raunchy Russell. Uh, this is his debut park for the website uh, on New Element and it is a gold winning park uh, which is pretty impressive for a first park submission. Uh, it's a nice looking park, it kind of just barely hit that gold threshold but uh, there's a lot of cool stuff in here um, and I figured we'd go through and take a look today at those little bits and what makes this park what it is. So let's jump on in. We've got our nice parking lot out here, pretty usual stuff. I do like to leave a uh, space in between every now and then just so that there's not full cars in every one. Um, here's our entrance, very Cedar Fair esque, and as you'll uh, see through the park, there's a lot of Cedar Fair and a lot of Six Flags in this park. A uh, nice uh, couple of ticket booths, and then our entrance here into kind of an understated. Um, front portion of the park i do love this little kind of tableau here rock work in the waterfall and the water tower right next to it definitely fits that theme and i do like the take on the uh, towers here like from cedar point's gatekeeper um most notably for the kind of rubble rock that goes up the middle of it i think that really helps set the theme a little bit here uh, for the the space so we've got two uh curved buildings here almost look like maybe an old merry-go-round uh, space and then a newer one, but uh, here is the main carousel here that uh, sits on just the corner of this midway. I like how this midway is sort of almost amorphous. It sort of grows and shrinks as it goes around. It's not necessarily a rigid straight midway. It feels kind of a little more warm and inviting in this way, and I think the the two toned path elements, the brick and the red, uh, also help in that regard. So let's turn and take a look at our first coaster here. So this is Firehawk. This is a B&M from 2016, according to the design. So these are awfully big trains, uh, eight cars, which is uh, about right. A single train here. Uh, looks like the other one might be in the maintenance area. But we do have a launch coaster. So this is sort of similar to Firehawk. A uh, pretty short launch track here. Or sorry, not Firehawk. Uh, Thunder. Thunderbird. That's it. Holiday uh, World's uh, Thunderbird. But here we go. Let's take a ride. So quick launch out of the station into that vertical loop and a dive loop. Our first of the two roll elements here around the entrance. So there's a zero G roll. Barn. Uh, we'll cut through here. Gonna double cut through, I suppose. Again, similar to Thunderbird. And then we have one more roll here. Actually holds up speed rather well uh, throughout the whole thing and then heads up here into the brakes, uh, braking a little bit aggressively, but not too, too bad. A um, couple things that I you know always like to note uh, here, as you can see it coming around the corner, it was sort of catching the edge here. Even though the real clearance of the ride in the game is one tile, you, you kind of want to account for, say, one and a half tiles. So it uh, just looks a little bit more natural throughout the space and there's less collision uh, opportunities. But jumping back out onto the uh, main path here, there's this cool trolley that runs through the whole thing. Um, not really marked as far as where it goes, so it's uh, doing a good job of plowing into a lot of people, but hopefully they're looking out. And they're going to watch the tram car, please. So, there's a couple of really nice little food buildings here. Love this guy. This little tiny one. Little uh, a trampoline bounce right here. And then the other ride here on the main plaza is this uh, coaster here. This is Hydra Arrow from 1980. Uh, what's interesting about this plaza is that there's two major coasters attached to kind of the very front of the park, which I can't necessarily think about a big park that's got that sort of design. I'm not quite sure what the, the cause is there. Okay, so we are stopped and waiting on something. Main three. There we go, let's get him off of the lift hill. Alright, here goes ours. Uh, I'll note the nice custom supports here on the lift hill. This one's got a little bit of a Loch Ness Monster in it with the uh, first start here and also the inner uh, twine loops, interlocked loops. 
Also, because of the uh, double helix that's right here in the structure, uh, very reminiscent of the screens that you was posted of Desperado that he was working on. Um, so a little, uh, little bit of heavy-handed inspiration there, but not uh, not too bad. It was good to see that you used. Now, it is a little bit heavy on theming when compared to a lot of the rest of the park, but uh, there's some mixes of theming here because we hit the second lift hill. Um, I think one of the criticisms you'll see of the park is there's not only park layout, but also sort of inconsistency of theme throughout, which I think I can agree with. Um, it's definitely nice uh, throughout. There's a lot of good stuff to see, uh, but there is some some definite complaints that I think are just easy things to fix for the, the next go around. Uh, so that's that's always good. That's a that's a thing. Here's a nice block of buildings on the front here. Um, I do really like this curved planter with the stairs on either side and this uh, planter behind it kind of radiates out from this circle. Uh, that's very nicely put together. This is super, super cool. This is a uh, Blue Jay. This is an SNS Free Fly. Um, this one is a static model, um, but in other uh, examples since then, uh, he's actually have has a working model of this. Uh, so honestly, this is like the first time I've seen this ride done well in the game. So um, it, it just looks relatively natural and the supports fit more or less how the support should look. So on the whole, very well done. One comment I would say is these quarter uh, tile um, queue line areas. It's nice for the static rides because it looks a little more peep scale. But keep in mind that all the other queues out here, like this one for the wooden coaster, are regular sized. So you uh, you have a little bit of an inconsistency there, which you generally want to avoid. All right, so carrying around, we're uh, coming through with this uh, nice gray tarmac path throughout, and then on either side of it, the cobblestone pathway. Very Cedar Fair approach to things. Um, we've got this great games area that looks very much like you'd see it uh, on Starpoint by Pacific Oster. Uh, this also feels very Worlds of Fun, such as this... Uh, uh, little kids coaster here, Cosmic Coaster, very similar to the one there. And then I do love these four by four and two by two flat rides. Uh, lots of good design there, just a good kids area throughout the space. And then this uh, helicopter ride overhead. There's a lot of path, um, almost maybe too much path in some instances, but um, not not awful. I think where this could be improved is more of these little uh, stalls. A definite cluster of seats and umbrellas and things like that uh, around some of the food areas. Uh, but look at this backdrop. Love the trees, the skies, and the skyline and the the clouds. I think that's very nicely done. Okay, so this wooden coaster here. First thing to note is the entire station is on the diagonal, which is super cool. Except that um, he's not done any kind of a hack on it for it to park there, so it does load a little bit out of the station. Would be cool to see that shoestring to properly get the whole thing sitting in there loading on the diagonal, but uh, you know, this isn't too, too bad for it. This one, I feel, has a lot of similarities to High Roller at Valley Fair, and indeed it is named High Roller. We'll take a ride on this. Nice shaping on all the different hills. Older wooden coaster, so it has the uh, anti rollback chains. Flat turnaround. A little bit of a tabletop hill right there. Uh, but this is great. Look at this uh, one, two, three, like four airtime hill uh, coverage there, which is very cool. Nicely done. Uh, one note this transfer track can't work because there's nowhere for this track to go. Uh, so just something to take a look at and uh, also the very Cedar Fair-esque queue covers um, they can get a little bit samey I suppose but not too bad uh, this picnic area is very nice along the waterfront here as we duck our heads up underneath uh, this disco coaster here so this is delirious nicely done although I typically like to mirror the flat section here on the other side uh, but this uh, frames this whole area here, which is sort of an amalgamation of a couple of different things. I don't quite know what theming is per se, um, but we've got the the space tower here, a uh, nice observation tower, and then on this side there's the Route 66 car ride, which I do love the theming for this. Got the motel facade, got the old school gas station, nice uh, water or water fountain here, 
and then the uh, sky ride to the other side. Uh, the park actually has sort of a uh, Michigan's Adventure type layout to it, which is not necessarily a good thing. Um, it's it's a big U shaped, which we'll see in just a minute as we, after we look at this rapids ride. Uh, so we do have the rapids follow the pathway all the way up here to the station, circular station here, uh, and then working our way down a lot of rock work here um, through these in this diagonal drop underneath the queue line, which is very well done. I think that looks rather nice. Not a whole lot of guest visibility, unfortunately. You can see quite a bit from the queue, but there's a nice fence, or uh, not so nice of a fence, I guess, all the way along the side here, which is a little bit of a shame. It would be nice to see uh, some more visibility for this, like some water sprayers and other things there, which I think these may meant or may be, um, but a little bit odd. Also, the fact that we have the maintenance area and the filtration yard here, I think maybe if you screen this and then instead open this up for viewing, that could be a better option. But shout out to the sign here in the front. That looks great. I love the look. And then the little locker type space here. More great food stalls. Uh, again, it would be nice to see some more of these uh, seating and umbrella areas uh, just to give the pathway some interest and some things to, uh, uh, to see. So there's a little pathway that goes down here around and underneath the arrow coaster, uh, but it actually ties back to this area. And the only way to get back to the rest of the park is to go all the way back here, retrace our steps all the way back to here. Uh, so not the best as far as park layout goes. The sky ride saves it like the train ride does at Michigan's Adventure, but still it's maybe not the best thing you want to do as far as layout goes. So let's start on this half of the park now. First thing we come to is this absolutely fantastic, uh, gigantic uh, Huss topspin. This is Quarry Blaster. Um, this feels almost like an entirely separate park here with the log flume that wraps around it and uh, does a really cool job wrapping around it. I love how these themes are integrated. You've got your sluice here coming all the way down into the, the basin for the topspin. Got some great theming here, this bridge over top of the log flume. Uh, all in all, I think this is really well done, but doesn't necessarily fit. You know, you look at this, and then you go look at this. I don't really see the two together, um, especially the amount of just stacked uh, stacked retaining wall monorail and things like that. Not to say that it doesn't look good, but it almost feels like I'm looking at something separate, especially when I go from this density of theming to this sort of open dirt space over here. But nonetheless, I think that's a very nice job at a custom ride. Also, integration of multiple rides together. Uh, very cool. It would be neat to see this pathway brought around so you could catch this drop visibly. Um, but you also go through here and in introduce this uh, interaction for the inverted coaster coming around. Let's go ahead and look at the inverted coaster. So this is Talon. This is another B&M from 2001, according to the, the uh, sign. Uh, a little bit surprised to see the brown uh, color scheme here. Everything else has been that very Cedar Fair bright color, you know, stand out and everything. And then this one is, you know, light brown and black to kind of blend everything together, which is maybe not the choice that I would make. Uh, would reduce to eight cars just because the only one that has nine is gigantic. And this is more of a smaller sized inverted coaster. Drop here into the loop, and then a long stretched Immelman here. Dropping down into a Batwing that's maybe a little bit too fast, actually a lot too fast, but also wrapped around this cool seating area. Maybe a little bit loud, but a cool place to be. And then a roll, a Gorse Screw, and then another roll. Uh, not necessarily the best looking layout. I think there's a lot of challenges here with some like parallels without ride crossing or without kind of crossing track, but then you have this roll, the corkscrew, and the other roll. It doesn't quite work for me. Um, but, you know, thankfully, if, if this is the weakest coaster in the park, I think it still still bodes pretty well for the whole thing. Um, again, pretty cool, like, uh, space here with the, uh, the entrance structure. I love this uh, rock work sort of circular deal. And then the exit also over here and the gift shop that's buried into it. The queue line is great. Um, kind of goes in and out of these covered structures almost through the mine and then the building has this rock work up and around it doesn't quite explain why there's rocks up and around the building but you know I feel like that's one of those things you 
kind of let go as far as a theme park viewing goes. But not not too bad. On this side, we've got more of these great planters. Um, I do love this look with the diagonal stairs here wrapping around. This is a nice way at least to attempt to tie into this kind of same design. Um, very well done. Nice foliage heavy here. Um, and then we do have the tree line twister, uh, which is an intimate impulse coaster. Um, probably needs a little bit longer of a launch track here, but on the whole, not, not too bad. I do love this leaf structure on top for the roof canopy. Got our twist, a little bit on the shorter end perhaps, and then have the, uh, the theming here for the brake run, uh, or the brake, uh, hold brake, I suppose. A simple sign. Good uh, entrance, exit, all of that sort of thing. Feels like we're missing a food cart or something up here, a merchandise cart maybe, but um, not too bad. And then the, the spacing on these tables, I think generally you want to combine them a little bit together. They almost feel a little bit too close when they're put side by side in RCT, but I feel like that's probably the better look overall. I think in this case it looks a little more spread out than needed. I do like these curved uh, flat ride um, coverings here for the queue and everything. Definitely very much a Pacific Coaster type thing. Uh, you've seen him do that quite a bit in his his parks. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of Pacific Coaster and there's a lot of Robbie ninety two in this uh, in this park. So this one wraps around and here is the landing spot for that sky ride. Comes down on the other side, so. Skyride will save you a lot of time if you needed to traverse between the parks or between the sides of the park. Um, like I said, maybe not quite the best park layout because this is another dead end here. Uh, but this rock climbing wall is super cool. I love that. And then the uh, space shot that's here is nice where it's sort of nestled inside the cliff. You get shot up around, get this great view, and then drop down. Here's part of our log flume. This is Log Jammer, arrow from 75. Um, substantially long ride when you look at it you, know, you got a little bit of weaving here first lift first drop from all the way out and around here two more lifts another big drop and then a pretty meandering ride home actually i'm curious you know 2700 feet which is not you know, crazy but it's it's still long for sure this uh this little kiosk is pretty cool i do like that It'd be neat to see some q elements or q pieces here and there but i do like that Here's a very nice swinging ship. If you want to learn how to shoestring that, feel free to check out my hacking tutorials. It's a very Six Flags thing with the Coke advertisement on the wall. And we'll bring us to our last coaster here. So this is Goliath. This is an Intamin from 2005. So gigantic trains. Uh, usually you don't see a six, six car or six person train, but um, we'll take it here as the Intamin. This is based off of El Toro. Pretty much a similar layout to it, where you got the out and back bit and then the figure eight finale. A bit of a slow lift hill here, so we'll speed it up. Great first drop. Lots of air time over that first hill. A lot faster over that second hill, which is shorter. Nice fast turnaround. Speed hill. And then we get to this figure eight finale curving across through that airtime hill, then come around and then into the brakes. Simple station. This roof seems a little bit too detailed for the flat portion here. You're really not going to see it unless you're inside, and I'm not quite sure it's going to do that same benefit on the inside as it does to the outside. So it almost looks like two kind of roofs together. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit strange. Um, but, you know, as we finish up looking through the park, I like it a lot. Um, I definitely think it's it's that kind of low, high silver, low gold range where it's got the detail there. The details don't necessarily marry up to each other in a lot of cases, um, and there's just some little things here and there as far as refinement goes that are going to be better in future uh, future things. Uh, since this park, um, Russell's put out a design, uh, which is great, and well, I'm sure we'll review at some point. Nice and simple and straightforward, but does the job and looks looks good. 
and I know he's working on some other things now, so hopefully there's more to come. But, you know, on the whole, really nice park. Um, a lot to look forward to in the future, and just always nice to see new players doing some really interesting type work uh, like this. So, until next time, uh, thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, if you would like to see any particular park featured in future videos, feel free to leave me a note or send me the park, and I will add it to the queue. So until next time, thank you guys very much, and have a great day. Bye now.